Hello friends and welcome to the broadcast. For the last few weeks we've been teaching about the walk of faith. We taught how faith begins with a revelation from God and you begin a walk of faith in life's journey. And we taught about the trial of faith, how your faith is going to go through many trials and tests and difficulties. And last week we began teaching about the patience of faith. And this week we're going to take up again on the patience of faith. You know, the Bible says without faith and patience, that's how we inherit the promises. Through faith and patience we inherit the promises. So you see, there's a, a patience factor to us receiving from God. Now, Scripture says in 1 Corinthians Uh, 13 and 11 when I was a child I talked like a child I thought like a child I reasoned like a child but when I became a man I put away childish ways see God wants us to grow up in the spirit and growth takes time you know as a child I would go on vacations with my parents and often I would stick my head into the front seat and say we're there yet we're there yet how much longer how much longer he said two more hours three more hours however long it was and I was so impatient to get to the destination And many, many times in our journey here as believers, we get impatient waiting on God. How long, God? How long? How long must I wait? But God has a perfect timing for everything, a perfect season for everything. There's nothing worse than eating unseasoned food. And many times we we try to get out ahead of God and we're not seasoned and ready for the difficulties that lay ahead because we didn't wait on God and we get in trouble. Now, Scripture says this in Jude 121. Guard and keep yourselves in the love of God. Expect and patiently wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, which will, he will bring you unto life eternal. You know, patience is something that, you know, you pray for patience, and then when situations happen, you're like, why did I ever pray for this? Recently, we were uh, on vacation in one of the amusement parks, and I was waiting in line. Now, it's one thing when you're waiting in the air conditioning, when you're well-fed and and your body's not hurting, and you're waiting, it's a lot easier to wait. But when you're hot, you're sweaty, you're sticky, and you're waiting behind Mr. and Mrs. Snail, who keep asking irrelevant questions, I kept telling myself, Lord, let patience have its perfect work. Let patience have its perfect work. Because in those situations, when we're going through difficulties and we're waiting, it, it, it makes it so much more difficult as, uh, to maintain that Christian attitude as we patiently wait. Now, many of God's kids are looking for the spectacular and missing the supernatural. You know, in the midst of our trials and troubles, while we're waiting on God to work for us, God is working a work within us. God's more uh, impressed with our character, more uh, working on our character, per se, than, oh God, I need this right now or I need that. God wants to develop godly character in us, and patience is going to just take time. Philippians 2 and 12 says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, as ye have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do his good pleasure. So he's working his character within us, and that's going to take time. We have a lot of half-baked Christians that have come out of the oven too soon. You ever eat a half-baked cake? It just doesn't taste right. You, you eat something that's half-cooked. It doesn't taste right. We've got we've to wait on God, and in His perfect timing, He can launch out. Uh, you can launch out that, into that business, launch out into the ministry in His perfect timing. Because a half-baked Christian is not going to leave a good taste in the mouths of everyone that meets them. Now, it takes uh, nine months for a normal child to be born. If a child is born before that time, the child is premature so there's a fullness of time and God does everything on schedule and on time you might not like his timetable but he's working out a plan on your behalf on behalf of of those are about you now instead of having godly character there are many characters like I like to call them prophet doodad apostle bucket mouth uh, sister busybody and brother know-it-all half-baked Christians that haven't waited on God for God to develop character within their life you know I often say your gift will take you where only your character can keep you your character is going to be able to keep you to maintain the situations that arrive in life Uh, many times difficult things come against us and we, we say oh God why did this happen why did that happen 
You know, I was a bodybuilder for many years. I still am a bodybuilder. I'm just building a different body, the body of Christ. And I don't know any bodybuilder that didn't get anywhere by resi- without resistance. And God allows resistance in our lives so we can build up our faith muscles. And also, it takes time to grow and get strong. And also, that's the, the patience of faith. Now, Psalms 105, 16 says this. Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land, and he broke the whole staff of bread. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron until the time, until the time that his word came. He was waiting on God. God gave him some dreams. And from the time he had those dreams until the fu- fulfillment was many, many years. Some of you have been waiting on God for the salvation of a loved one. You've prayed and, and God's given you a scripture, given you something, and it just hasn't happened yet. Be encouraged because God is going to bring it about in the fullness of his time. As a matter of fact, there's some that are watching me right now that you've been waiting on God for many things. And God is going to fulfill his word for you in the perfect timing, in the fullness of time. How many know in the Bible, when the disciples were in the upper room on the day of Pentecost, it said suddenly the room was filled with a mighty rushing wind. And see, as we're waiting on God, all of a sudden he brings his suddenlies into our life. Suddenly the blessing comes. You say, wow, I I have been, been waiting and waiting, and boom, suddenly it happened. And that's how God will move many times in our lives. It says, until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his substance, to bind his princes at pleasure, to teach his senators wisdom. He waited for God for many, many years, and in 24 hours he went from the prison to the palace. In 24 hours, God raised him up, and God can do the same for you, as he's promised you. Now, it might not look like everything's working out, but again, God is working things out, on your behalf as uh, if we love God and we're called according to his purpose do you really believe that all things work together for good to those that love God and are called according to his purpose because if you love God and you are called according to his purpose it's one thing I can tell you if you're in the purpose of God for your life don't be moved to the left don't be moved to the right everything's going to work out in your life when you stand in the purpose that God has for you in Genesis 42 and 36 it says and Jacob their father said unto them me ye have bereaved of my children, Joseph is not, Simeon is not, and ye will take Benjamin away. All these things are against me. From his perspective, he said, man, Joseph is dead. Now, now Simeon's taken away. All these things are against me. All these negative things happen in my life. But little did he know that God was working out a bigger plan than he could ever have imagined. Joseph was in Egypt, second in command over all the known world. And God put him there so he could save many people alive. And little did he know that the deliverance of his own family was involved in that. Salvation of his own family. It was all working out in a plan that was too big for him to comprehend. So from his perspective, he said, all these things are against me. Well, a little while, little did he know that all things were working out for good for him. And so it's going to be for you. You may not understand the situations of life, but they, they say hindsight is twenty twenty. And one day you're going to look back and say, wow, God worked all these things out in my life. I don't know how he did it because he's working out a plan on your behalf, a good plan. Now, patience is an attitude which reflects a calm, unruffled temper without murmuring and fretfulness and discontent during times of hardship and suffering while we're waiting on God and man. And remember, I told you about the amusement park. When you're suffering and you're physical and you're waiting, it makes it much more difficult to maintain that attitude. But the Holy Ghost can help us do it. Galatians 5 and 6 says, But faith worketh by love. See, faith worketh by love. And 1 Corinthians 13, 4 says, Love endures long and is patient and kind. See, some people will endure long, but they're not patient and kind when they do it. They'll say, I'm waiting for you. I'm always waiting for you. See, they're enduring, but they're complaining and they're murmuring. And and love is patient and kind as you wait. As a matter of fact, it says in 1 Corinthians 13, 7, love bears up under anything and everything that comes, is ever ready to believe the best of every person. His hopes are fadeless under all circumstances, and it endures, it endures everything without weakening. And you see, so we see a fruit of the Spirit is patience. A fruit, one of the fruits of the Spirit is patience, but love and patience, they go hand in hand. Now, 
again, as I had said when we, we started the broadcast, is through faith and patience that we inherit God's promises. Now, the scripture says in 2 Corinthians 1 and 20, for all the promises of God in him are yes and in him, amen, unto the glory of God. By us, So God's already said yes to his promises. And when you pray for something, patience will give you the ability to wait for it so you can receive that thing. Many times we get so impatient, well, God's not answering my prayers. Keep praying, keep believing, and keep waiting on him. Now, the idea of waiting on God isn't sitting around just tapping your fingers. It's the idea of put, a, a waiter puts a rag over his arm and, the, and uh, the waiter's waiting on you. When you're waiting on God, it's waiting in his presence, waiting in prayer, waiting for him in communion with him. That's how we should be waiting on God. Now, Scripture says in Hebrews 6 and 12, uh, it's in Amplified. In order that you may not grow disinterested and become spiritual sluggards, but imitators, behaving as do those who through faith, by the leaning of their entire personality on God, in Christ, in absolute trust and confidence in His power, wisdom, and goodness, and by practice of patient endurance and waiting, are now inheriting the promises. Now, many have thrown in the towel, so to speak, and have missed God because they couldn't wait. They couldn't wait. Galatians 6, 9 says, and let us not lose heart and grow weary and faint in acting nobly and doing right. For in due time and at the appointed season, we shall reap if we do not faint or loosen and relax our courage and give up. So we have to wait. Many times we get so discouraged. Well, it's just not working out. I'll try plan B. That's what happened to Abraham and Sarah. They made an Ishmael because they were waiting for God to fulfill a promise that Sarah would have a son. And because it wasn't happening, he went and made an Ishmael. Many times we make a lot of mistakes because we don't wait on God. And we don't wait for him to bring us the blessing. The Bible says the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow with it. But if we go do things in our own knowledge and in the flesh, so to speak, what happens is we may add sorrow while we're waiting. Now, Abraham and Sarah, they waited 20 years for God to fulfill his promise and give him an Isaac. It says in Hebrews 11 and 11, through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. She judged God faithful, said, God promised me. I believe God is going to happen. She stayed in faith, and it took 20 years for that promise to come to pass, but it surely came to pass. Now, Romans 4.17 brings out this point again. It says, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth or makes alive the dead, and calleth those things that be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able to perform. Now, we just talked about him making an Ishmael. And often, often I say when we do things in the flesh, it looks good. I believe, I believe Hagar was a good-looking lady, and, and, uh, and his wife Sarah said, Look, God's left me barren. Why don't you go in to my handmaiden and have children by her? Many times, uh, the ways of the flesh look good, but then we'll create a lot of problems. As a matter of fact, all the trouble we're having in the Middle East today stems from that. Now, without the maturing of your faith through patience, you're not going to be able to contain or maintain the blessings of the Lord. You see, we, we've seen so many people uh, play the lottery and win the lottery. And, you know, it's a fact that most people that win the lottery, many of them will go broke. Because, see, money only magnifies what you are. So if you're a foolish person, you're going to be a magnified fool. If you're a wise person, you're going to be a magnified wise person. And many people that win the lottery go broke because they don't know what to do with the money. And, and the money literally destroys them or they file bankruptcy through it. You see, an inheritance gotten quickly in the end won't be blessed. It's through patience that we're able to maintain the blessings that we have as God develops character within us character that can maintain and hold his blessings i often say can you stand to be blessed some people can't stand to be blessed they get blessed with a lot of money or stuff or things and then they walk away from jesus christ and they walk away from the things of, that that mean so much to them because the money magnified those things that were were in them 
So we've got to let God work godly character in us so we can contain his blessings when he pours it on us. Proverbs 20, 21, a scripture I just quoted, an inheritance gained quickly at the beginning will not be blessed in the end. And Proverbs 1, 32 says, the turning away of the simple shall slay them. And listen to this, the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. So a fool who prospers will be destroyed because he's not able to maintain it. And patience, patience is when God works godly character in your life. See, you can have a gift. We've got a lot of sports stars that have a lot of gift, gifts. They play well, they, they do well, but their character is not equal to their gift. It takes time to develop character. A gift is just given, but it takes time to develop character. Now, in our age of quick fixes and microwave dinners and fast food, we have a give it to me now generation. I want it now. I got to have it right now, right? That's what many, many uh, espouse to. Now, Luke 15 and 11 says, Jesus went on to say, there was once a man who had two sons. And the younger one said to him, Father, give me my share of the property now. See, normally he would receive that when his father died, but he said, no, 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 I want it now. And this young man did not have the character to handle that type of wealth. So the man divided his property between his two sons. And what happened, that's the the story of the prodigal son. He went and spent it and blew it all because he did not have the character. And that only comes through patience. Now, the attitude of give it to me now is created in moral lifestyles. Uh, Lust and strong desire wants it now, but true love waits. I I could say if there's a young lady watching a broadcast right now and your boyfriend wants you to have sexual relations with him if he loves you he'll put a ring on your finger the bible says jacob waited seven years for rachel because he loved her and it seemed but a few days see true love waits and it'll it'll patiently wait but if they give it to me now i gotta have it now i gotta be with you now 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 true love waits that's not love that's lust strong desire lust is self-centered love gives lust takes remember that love gives lust takes we had, a, uh, we had a couple once come in my office, and uh, he had left his wife, and he had met this other young lady. He said, oh, we're in love. I said, no, you're in lust. You're in sin. You're in adultery. You need to repent. And I looked at the young lady. This, per- this young man had been dabbling with drugs, and I said, are you going to wait around for him when he goes to jail for drugs? And her face got wide-eyed. I said, no, you're not. You're in lust. You're not in love. You're in sin. You need to repent. You need to go back to your wife. You need to go back. God's not blessing. This isn't of God. It's, oh, it's God. No, it's not God. That's foolishness and it's sin, and you need to repent. And uh, sadly to say, I can, I can tell you uh, that he, he didn't go back to his wife, and it, it turned out to be a real big mess, and he's out of Christ and away from the Lord. Now, the Scripture says, Jake, uh, Genesis 29, 18, it said, Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter, And Laban said, it is better that I give her to thee than I should give her to another man. Abide with me. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed unto him but a few days, but for the love he had unto her. Seemed but a few days because he was waiting in love, waiting in patience for, for Rachel. Now, Scripture also says in Proverbs 26, 23, Burning lips, uttering insincere words of love, and a wicked heart are like an earthen vessel covered with the scum thrown off from the molten silver, making it appear to be solid silver. Oh, baby, you know I love you. And then the girl gets pregnant, and then the guy disappears. He just disappears like, oh, it wasn't love. It's nothing but lust. Nothing but lust. Burning lips, uttering insincere words of love. No, patience. Patience. In love and patience, you're going to wait for that person. Say, I'm going to patiently wait for you. I knew a lady who her husband was incarcerated, and she waited 20 years. And even had ministers saying, oh, you you ought to leave this guy. You ought to leave him. But no, she waited for him to be released. And they're still married today because she patiently waited in love. Now, we created a society of debt because people simply don't want to wait. And they've not been trained to wait. I got to have it now. Mentality is I got to, man, I got to put it on charge. And you'll run that charge card up and you'll run up your debt because you can't wait for things. You don't want to wait till you can save up enough money to get it. Got to have it now. We've got people making a quarter million dollars a year that cannot pay their debt because of a got to have it now mentality. Instead of waiting and living b- below your means, living above your means, and the got to have it now mentality is put you in debt. And so you need patience to learn how to wait for things, save up for those things so you can afford it. If you can't afford it, go without it. Now, Scripture says in Proverbs 21.20, 20, 
In the house of the wise are stores of choice food and oil, but a foolish man devours all he has. And again in Hebrews 13 and 5, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. So while we're waiting, we wait upon the Lord, and we grow to be one with him and grow in character with him. God had called me to the ministry many, many years ago, but I was waiting on God, and God told me, as an oak tree grows slow, so it would be in me. And God works character in our life. I had a gift, but the character had to be developed. We've got, we've got a lot of young men and women that go off to seminary for four years of training to, to have 30 years of ministry. And it, it takes many years of character development for that person, for that character to equal to gift. God wants to develop character in our life and it takes time and patience it is going to work that character within us now scripture says about waiting on the lord isaiah 40 and 29 he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might he increases strength even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fail but they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint. You see, as we're waiting on God, we, uh, we develop that patience in His presence. You see, if we don't learn to wait on God, we could miss out on so many blessings. Uh, Saul, because of his lack of patience, he was the first king of Israel, missed out on a kingship because of lack of patience. And let's look at this story in 1 Samuel 13 and 5. It says, And the Philistines gathered themselves together to fight with Israel, 30,000 chariots and 6,000 horsemen and people as the sand which is on the seashore in multitude. And they came up and pitched in Michmash eastward from Beth Haven. When the men of Israel saw that they were in a strait or a difficult place for the people were distressed, then the people did hide themselves in caves and in thickets and in rocks and in high places and in pits. And some of the Hebrews went over Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. And as for Saul, he was yet in Gilgal. And all the people followed him, trembling. And he tarried seven days, according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. So Samuel had told Saul, listen, you need to wait seven, ta- seven days for my arrival. Wait for me to come. So he waited seven days, and on the seventh day, he was getting antsy and getting anxious. It said, but Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. And Saul said, Bring him the burnt offering to me and peace offerings. And he offered the burnt offering. Now, why was this a problem? Because it was only for Samuel or a priest to do and not for a king. He stepped out of his office and he got in trouble. And it came to pass, as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came. And Saul went out to meet him that he might salute him. And Samuel said, What hast thou done? And Saul said, Because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Michmash. Therefore said I, The Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made, I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself therefore and offered a burnt offering. See, one thing about Saul is pretty interesting, is that he wasn't seeking... Uh, kingship he was seeking for his donkeys that were lost and he came upon the prophet Samuel and he got anointed king but he had no real preparation or character development and patience it was given to him quickly and what happened was he lost it many times when you give something to somebody quickly they end up losing it because they haven't developed the strength and the ability to maintain that blessing you know earlier in one of our other teachings I taught about the butterfly. The butterfly, it's a common fact that if you take a knife and cut open a cocoon of a butterfly and let that butterfly just pop out, he will not have strength in his wings to fly. But through the struggle of breaking out of the cocoon, he's going to develop strength to fly. And that's, that's a time factor. It's a time of difficulty, but a time factor. So God in patience allows us to develop character to maintain his blessings. And Saul didn't maintain it. And let's see what happens in Verse 13, And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly, thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord hath sought a man after his own heart, and the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. So see, 
Waiting on God is such an important thing. We could miss so many blessings if we don't wait on God and learn uh, the, the character trait of patience in our walk with him. You know, the Bible says that Moses had spent 40 years on the backside of a desert and God called him. And you see, he was, he was just out there, you know, figured, well, I'm all washed up. I'm 80 now uh, and put everything behind him. But it was, it was at that point that God called him into the ministry. Exodus 3 and 1 says, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert. And he came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in the flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. So Moses thought he was called to deliver Israel. And he had 40 years of waiting on the backside of the desert, and that's when God called him. Now, 40 years is a long time to wait, but it developed the character qualities in his life so he could lead a nation of millions of people out of Egypt. And God is going to work in you. He's not rushing through our life. He's not a microwave God. Boom, instantaneously. See, the Bible even talks about healing, patience and healing. There were 10 lepers that wanted to be healed and came to Jesus, and he said, go show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were healed. So as we believe God for a miracle in our life, say, Father, I thank you for that miracle. You stay in faith and patience, and you're going to receive that miracle, whatever it may be. A miracle is instantaneous, but a healing, sometimes there's a progression, and it takes time in our lives. I want to pray for you today, friend. If you're watching me today, and you've been waiting on God for many things in your life, I just want to pray that that God continues to work his character in you, continues to work out that character of making Christ in you, the hope of glory. Father, I pray for these precious saints of God as they're waiting in patience for you to move in their life, Lord God, that you touch them right now, that you strengthen them with might by your spirit in their inner man, Lord God, that godly character will be developed in their life, Lord God, that they will maintain the blessings that you have for them. Friend, if you're also watching today and you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ, pray this prayer with me now. Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I accept you as the Lord and Savior of my life. And I confess you as Lord of my life right now in Jesus' name. Well, friend, God bless you. God keep you. And I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.